as FEMA dear idealistic teachers, and my dear sweet listeners, Assalamu alaikum adab, and very fresh good morning to one and all. Well, this is Mikhat Mohyuddin before you today of 10th standard. So, I would like to start today by sharing a secret with you all. Look, this book, it isn't just a paper bounded by a cover. It's a world builder, ladies and gentlemen. It is a world builder. It is a friend. And it is a time machine, a mentor. But look today, look today, ladies and gentlemen, it is lonely. It is lonely, literally. So, when was the last time you let a book speak to you, not as an assignment, but as a companion, well, I'm not surprised by your reaction. Today, I invite you to reconnect because in this past-paced world, the slow and thoughtful journey of reading might be exactly what we need today. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, finally the wait is over. Today, I'm going to talk about books our forgotten friends. So let's dive right in. We often hear the phrase, books are our best friends. But along the way, somewhere, as technology evolved, books began to gather dust on shelves, our lifelong companions, replaced by screens and other digital content. Today, I want to remind us of the invaluable role books have played and continue to play in shaping our intellect, our imagination, and our society. Well, imagine walking through a library, the smell of old pages, the hum of knowledge waiting to be discovered. Books have always been more than mere paper and ink. They are companions who have no agenda, offer no judgment, and are always there when we need them. While the world moves toward instant gratification, books provide something we are gradually losing. Time to think, time to reflect, and time to grow. Now, the fact of the matter is that, why have we forgotten them? Let me tell you, in this digital era, our attention spans are shortening and distractions are endless. Smartphones, streaming platforms, and social media now compete for our time. They offer fleeting moments of entertainment, but unlike books, they rarely nourish you deep. Reflect your thinking. The question we must ask is, have we, in the pursuit of convenience, traded away one of our most reliable sources of wisdom? Don't worry, I will give you some examples here. So first and foremost is fiction as the key to empathy. Take for instance Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. This novel, with its powerful exploration of racism and morality, does more than tell a story. It allows us to step into the shoes of another person, feeling what they feel, understanding their struggles, and developing empathy. I swear upon the Holy Prophet, no digital feed can evoke this level of human connection. When we read, we become part of the world between the pages, ladies and gentlemen. Now second, non-fiction as the tool for change. I consider Malala Yousafzai's autobiography, I am Malala. It isn't just a recounting of her life, it is a manifesto for change, it is a manifesto for education, it is a manifesto for courage. Her words empower readers to take a stand for what they believe in. Such books are not passive entertainments, they spark moments, shift paradigms, and inspire action. So, now it is time for our academic book.
books, the tool and the foundation of knowledge, as you all know. So even in the academic world, foundational works like A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking or The Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Thomas Kim continue to shape our understanding of the universe and science. They are more than just texts. They are stepping stones of deeper inquiry, a source of continuous intellectual growth that keeps evolving long after when we close the book. Well, in the nutshell, it's time to rediscover our forgotten friends. Books are far from being obsolete. They are timeless repositories of human thought, emotion, and knowledge. While screens may dominate our lives, we must take a conscious effort to return to these silent friends who have patiently waited for us. Books help us learn from the past, enrich our present, and build a fascinating future. So we, let's celebrate them, read them, and more importantly, share their wisdom. So, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for your exorbitant time. Fia Manila. Peace out. <laughs>